Today we're going to look at NECA's ultimate, The Bride of Frankenstein. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to look at another Universal Monsters NECA classic. This is The Bride of Frankenstein. Yes, based on the James Whale movie of the same name, The Bride of Frankenstein. Very good movie. Is it my favorite? No, but it is a lot of people's favorite. And I do appreciate it. It is really, really good. Uh, just, I, I would put it down towards the bottom of my Universal Monsters movie classics. That's just me. So this movie was released in 1935. So a whole, over a hundred years after the book Frankenstein was written by Mary Shelley. Now, this is one of the reasons, and I know it, it, we gotta we gotta try to separate our movies from our books. I do realize that, but when your movies try not to separate from the book, but then they do separate, it, it just throws it off. So at the beginning of the Bride of Frankenstein, if you've never seen the the classic movie. Elsa Lanchester is playing Mary Shelley, the author of Frankenstein, okay? That should, in my opinion, sway them to try to keep it as close to the novel as they could, but it goes off the rails, totally off the rails, so... In my opinion, they should have never had the Mary Shelley scene in the movie. Should have never done it. And I did touch on this a little bit when we opened our Jada Toys Bride of Frankenstein. But I just wanted to get a little further into it. Now, again, don't get me wrong. I do like this movie. I do like it a lot. I do. I, I don't think it's nearly as good as the the Frankenstein, our, our 1931 original Frankenstein. I don't think it's even close. Now, the book, if you've never read it, now I'm going to have some spoilers in here, but if you've never read the book, go do it. And if you don't read, get the Audible book, get on whatever Spotify or whatever you find your, your books on, get it. Now, most of them are free. Now, there was no, Mary Shelley did not write The Bride of Frankenstein. She didn't do it. There was Frankenstein and that was it. There wasn't a Frankenstein part two, anything. But there was mention of a mate for Frankenstein, for the monster Frankenstein in the book. There was mention of it. Now, the spoiler here is that it never came to fruition. Now, Dr. Frankenstein, he did say that I will make you a mate because Frankenstein got pretty smart. He's a monster, but years went by where he developed his brain. It could talk and then got he, he was able to get emotions so he wanted a mate everybody's afraid of him he's single so he's kind of in the beginning of the book is a little bit of the protagonist he's not so much as the antagonist actually dr victor frankenstein the doctor that created the monster is kind of your antagonist. He's, you know, he's messing with life and death and the creation and God. And so he's kind of the antagonist, the bad guy, if you will, of this. And Frankenstein's monster is just kind of, you know, he didn't want to come to life. He don't even like life. Now, this is the book, mind you. This is the book. Well, he develops, he meets the old blind man. And the blind man can't see his face, so he's not afraid of him like everybody else is. 
But Frankenstein in the book kills a lot of people. Kills a lot of them. Now, when he confronts Dr. Frankenstein later in the novel and says, I want a mate. I want you to create me another monster, somebody that I can live with and cope with and communicate with and be like me. Dr. Victor Frankenstein says, okay, I'll do it. So he goes home, he sleeps on it, and he's like, what am I doing? Why am I even thinking about this? This monster that I created has killed so many people. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to create him a mate because I've already messed this, this world up. What am I doing? What am I thinking? I'm not going to do it. Well, all along, Frank, the monster Frankenstein told Dr. Victor Frankenstein, if you don't make me a mate, I will kill everybody that you love in your life. Everybody. So you better do it because I'll be watching. Well, he's watching Victor. And Victor decided, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to make a bride of Frankenstein. And that's when the monster Frankenstein kind of becomes the antagonist. And Victor becomes the protagonist in the in the novel. So they kind of flip-flop roles there. And I'm telling you, the monster goes on a freaking killing spree that you would not believe. Now this book Mary Shelley wrote was in 1818. That's a long time ago. And I'm telling you, it is a top notch book so like I said get on your Spotify if you don't read get on your your Amazon audible if you don't read listen to it because it is so good and and I am probably a lover of literature before I am a lover of movies I do like movies especially your classics I'm not a big movie guy now like if somebody asked me if I wanted to go see the new Superman I would tell him hell no I don't want to go see Superman because Christopher Reeve to me is Superman not some jerk wad playing him now with a bunch of CGI crap I know I'm old school I'm just like the grumpy old man get off my lawn I totally am but you will too be one day if you're a young whippersnapper right now you'll become this old man but anyways that was my problem with the Bride of Frankenstein movie. I I could I could deal with it if you take Mary Shelley out of the beginning. Don't have Elsa Lanchester play Mary Shelley at the beginning of the book and then try to get us to believe that Mary Shelley wrote it this way because she did not write it this way. Hers was way 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 darker way darker than what we see in this movie now I know censorship and movies was a lot harsher than books most people probably they say here I got a book Frankenstein said oh, I release it go ahead no censorship on it at all but read the book by Mary Shelley absolutely read the book it will floor you I think you'll be really 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 surprised I have a, one of my son, he, sons, he's 20, did he just turn 22? I think he just turned 22. Uh, Mary Shelley Frankenstein is one of his favorite books. So that's coming from a 22-year-old kid that reads and listens to a lot of books. But, yeah, that's, that is my intro to this. And I know it sounds like I'm bashing it, but really I'm not. Um, it's just... It, it's, goes a little off the rails for me and and it's so far-fetched the the I know the whole creating life is far-fetched from from dead people or bodies but the movie you know the movie where Dr. Petroius makes the small little people and stuff but he still wants to be able to make it from dead. I'm like, why do you want to go any further than what you just did? You just made little people in a bottle. That's good enough for me. I don't know. But there is no Dr. Pretorius in, in the book. Matter of fact, there is a Dr. Waldman, and he is 
Victor's mentor, and he's totally against doing the things that he's doing. He calls his dad and says, look, your son Victor has gone off the deep end. He's trying to make life out of death, and I just don't think he should touch it. That's that's the book. And, and then when he does, it, things just go bad for him, and everybody in the book dies in the end except for Victor. He gets away. He does get away, but he feels so bad. And like I said, he starts the book as kind of the antagonist. And by the end of the book, he is the protagonist because of all the, the, all the fear and all the killing and all the death that, that he's responsible for, really. And once he figures out that he did wrong, he doesn't want to make this Bride of Frankenstein anymore for Frankenstein. And that's when the monster decides... Look, you're not going to make her. I'm going to kill everybody that you hold dear to your life. And that's that, again, like I said, that's my reason. But anyways, let's check out The Bride of Frankenstein. And on this package, let me get my glasses. It says, more fearful than the monster himself, Carl Lemley presents The Bride of Frankenstein, starring Karloff, Colin Clive, Valerie Hobson, Elsa Lanchester, Ernest Thieger, and E.E. E. Clive, Ultimate Bride of Frankenstein. So, I mean, this is a very, very good um, action figure, and I have opened this. I have indeed opened this. I want to let you know that. I had it displayed uh, last Halloween, but... I did not open this one because this is my mint on card. This is the one I opened. So I'm going to set this aside so I don't accidentally open it. And we are going to open this one right here. And I did open this at the bottom. So I'm going to get a knife out here. Pop that out. If you do that, you can save your little tags here so you don't rip these tabs off of your box. If you keep all your boxing, if you don't, don't worry about it. There she is, and we will pull out her backdrop, see what it looks like. That's it, empty box there, and here is her, her backdrop and this kind of looks like a old creepy laboratory not that bad looks pretty good actually I kind of like it got a skull back there some a step kind of a lot of concrete and some jars and a beaker so not bad and here she is Ella Elsa Lanchester aka the Bride of Frankenstein in her plastic coffin all right, let's see. Now, we do have this big whole cover here that we got to pull off. So that whole thing is covering up our action figure, which is very nice. Keeps all your accessories in. And we will go for our accessories first. So the first thing we have are... These wrappings, these extra wrappings, kind of like our mummy had, our Boris Karloff mummy. These wrappings were on, hanging off his arms. You just hook them to the action figure and put them in a pose. So our wrappings there, pretty cool. And then we get a right and a left open hands, kind of slapping, splayed out open hands, right and left, totally wrapped. So very cool. And then we get this. This is really nice because when they first take off the sheet, she's got, she is totally mummified, kind of like the mummy. Makes you wonder why they put her in the ground with all this wrapping on her. And then our next accessory is an extra head, and it is the wrapped up head. So this will actually just, pop right on there so you have a mummified looking head so that's what that is we'll get into that in a little bit and our next head is her 
screaming head. Now, this is what she looks like in the movie when she sees the monster. She don't like him either. Another spoiler there. He, they create this bride, and, and Frankenstein thinks, oh, she's going to love me. We're going to be, it's going to be nothing but gumdrops and rainbows. Not so. She don't, she don't even like the looks of Frankenstein. And then, that's it on accessories, so we will pull out Elsa Lanchester as the Bride of Frankenstein, and the Bride has been resurrected. Yes, sir, there she is. That's it. All we've got is our silicon packet. We'll set that to the side, and we also have this little piece of plastic. Set that to the side. Now, let's check out articulation first. She... Doesn't look up really hardly at all. She does. She looks down pretty good. She's got left, right, pretty good head movement other than up. Unfortunately, these figures don't look up too good. We have shoulders all the way around. I am going to take this gown off of her while we go through articulation. Now, it is threaded together, this gown is, so be very careful so you don't pull them threads all the way out. I think we can just slide it down over her shoulders slowly and carefully. Ooh, I'm close to getting that thread out of there. Probably should have took it through the top. There we go. We got that off. That is her gown. Beautiful gown. Yep, and it is look at that stitching there. We'll get pictures of that. We'll have to get pictures of that. But that's beautiful. All right, back to the bride. Here she is in nothing but her wrappings now. We're back on the head. Looks all right. Shoulder all the way around. We do have single butterfly in there. Single butterfly. Single jointed elbows. They are pinless. She can give you that Nolan Ryan fastball. She's got rotating shoulder or elbow right there. We have the ab crunch. Pretty good ab crunch. She can go left and right, up and back, so not bad there. We have no hula hoop waist on this one. We have not very good splits and not very good straddles on her. She has a single jointed knee that eh, maybe it goes to a 90 degree angle there, maybe. She has ankle rocker. They will rotate and Look at her. Elsa Lanchester was quite the ballerina. Do, 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 do. She can pull that absolutely. All right. So we've got her out of her gown. Let's check her out. Doesn't look quite right like that. Does not look quite right to me. She's wrapped up like the mummy, but this is how she is first seen. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this head off. This is the head that came in. Let's take it. Let's make sure that's the head that came with her. Yes. So this is my mint on card one, and you can see that indeed she does have the closed mouth on in the package. But we're going to put this one on to start out with because that's what we got. So here she is wrapped up. We can see her eyes. They pull that away and they see her eyes and they open up and he does the same thing. It's alive! It's alive! But here she is closed up. Check that out. Now that looks really good. That's pretty pretty uh, awesome by NECA how they gave us that. Then they pull that away and there's her eyes. So wrapped up. Elsa, this face sculpt is really good. I mean, the rat, you got the staples, the wraps. Man, it looks good. They do an outstanding job on this. So, we will now take this wrap off. And remember, this movie was in black and white. So, I'm not sure... But I have heard Elsa Lanchester actually did have this red hair like she has right here. So the actress had red hair, but 
in the movie, it kind of looks a little bit darker. You wouldn't think it was quite red. You would think maybe a brunette, but apparently she was a redhead. So NECA got that information and made our action figure a redheaded bride of Frankenstein. All right, now we're going to put on the head that came with her, which is this kind of slightly open mouth. And I, I think Elsa Lanchester was a good-looking lady. Really, I think so in this movie. Even dressed up as Bride of Frankenstein, she's got the pouty lips. And she's quite attractive, I think, even as a monster. And maybe that's why she didn't like the monster. Because uh, he is scary. Now I do have the Bride of Frankenstein movie, Monst uh, Boris Karloff, coming. Whenever it releases from NECA, I will be having that. Alright, we got our gown back on. So the gown's back on, so now this is what we see. They put her in this blanket. I don't think it's much of a gown or a dress. I think it's pretty much just a sheet that they pin up onto her to keep her covered up. But this is, I mean, unbelievable. This face sculpt right here looks exactly like Elsa Lanchester. The pouting lips, the wide eyes, the eyebrows, the, the hair with the white stripe on either side. And they are off. Now, Somebody might say, well, look at her hair. Why isn't it the same? It wasn't the same. Watch the movie. It is off. One's, one is a little bit thinner and not as long, just like we got right here. So very good attention to detail for NECA. But, man, she looks so good. Now, these hands are just closed hands like this because she's wrapped up. Now... What we're going to do is we're going to pull this off, and we're going to, this is when she sees the monster. This is absolutely when she sees the monster. And like I said, she does not like him. If you've never seen the movie, you got to see it. She freaks out. Even she freaks out at how ugly the monster is. And there you go. Check it out. Oh, my gosh. Just absolutely stunning. And she's kind of looking up at him. Kind of up and... Ah! She don't like him at all. Very ugly. She's got scars under her chin where Victor stitched her up. Well, actually, it's not Victor in the movie. They even changed the name. Yeah, in the, in the movie, it is Henry. Henry. The book is Victor Frankenstein. The movie is Henry Frankenstein. But, yeah... Really good stuff. You can see her teeth. Her, to her tongue looks like it's wet. This is absolutely awesome. Let's get these hands off. And we'll go for these splayed out hands. And he touches, Frankenstein touches her hand, puts his hand on her hand, and she freaks out again. She just don't like him at all. And that's when Frankenstein loses his crap. And he's like, whatever, I'm done. You're out of here. You're out of here. You're out of here. And he, and the, and the, this, this is a little bit silly too, because there's a self-destruct button in the castle, and Frankenstein pulls it, pulls the self-destruct button, and the castle blows up. And he tells, he tells Henry, run, run, Henry Frankenstein, and the rest all, patrol, Doctor Petroius, is that his name, Petroius. He dies, and the bride dies, and you think Frankenstein dies. But, yeah, very good. I like it. Let's get the, uh, can we get these uh, wraps on her? There we go. There's one, and we'll get the other one on her. Boy, I'm as blind as a bat. There we go. Look at that. Check out the wrappings hanging off of her. How good does she look? 
Now, you know what we got to do. We've got to get our Frankenstein's monster down. There he is. Check it out. Together again, our colored version of the Bride of Frankenstein with Frankenstein's monster. So very good action figure all in all. I think it's a very good likeness to Elsa Lanchester. So very happy with it. Glad to have it. I know I, I kind of, probably count, kind of sound like I'm bashing a movie. I'm not. I'm just a, a more of a reader than I am a movie watcher. And, and these, these action figures here are based on the movie. But you got to think the, the movies were based off these books by Mary Shelley. So, and again, why have Mary Shelley at the beginning of the movie, The Bride of Frankenstein, if you're going to go that far off? But if they didn't, there wouldn't be a bride. But you didn't have to put Mary Shelley in there. But it is what it is. But that's it for Elsa Lanchester, for the Bride of Frankenstein, for Mary Shelley. Until next time, oh yeah.